Hello everyone, I'm here with Ingvi, who worked on Forgotten Anne. Um, so tell us more about your game. So, uh, Forgotten Anne is a seamless cinematic adventure platformer. Uh, you play the role of Anne, uh, who's a young woman who grew up in a place called the Forgotten Lands. A Forgotten Lands is a realm where anything that you've loved and lost and forgotten about ends up, and it gets imbued with this power called Anima, which is the life force of the world. Um, Anne is the enforcer of the world. She has an Arca, which is the stone that's uh, on, on a gauntlet type thing on her, on her hand. Uh, it allows her to manipulate this energy. So, um, s uh, take power out of canisters, uh, uh, power machinery with it, and manipulate the flow of it uh, in, the, in, the, in the scenery behind her. Um, and quite literally suck the life force out of any forgotten thing that stands in her way. Uh, she and, and Master Bonku, they're the only two humans in this world. Master Bonku is working on an ether bridge, a bridge between the two worlds in order to get back home. Uh, most of the Forgotlings are actually helping him out with this because they want to get back home just as much as he does. Um, so yeah, it's, a, it's a definitely story focused. It's a seamless experience from when they start the game until you finish. Uh, there's no loading screen at any point. Um, and yeah. Um, I noticed there was a lot of pop-ups up, pop up that says it, this could affect the future. So is this going to be part of the mechanic in the game? where you make one decision and it could affect something that happens in the future. Absolutely. Uh, your, your, uh, your actions definitely do have consequences, both uh, your choices during dialogue and the actions that you take in-game as well. Um, obviously, first thing I noticed is the art is fantastic. So tell me more about your inspiration and your concept behind the art of Forgotten Anne. Well, we take inspiration from a var wide variety of sources. Uh, primarily, of course, uh, Japanese anime, from uh, any anything from uh, Studio Ghibli to uh, Satoshi Kon, um, and the Western dark fairy tale as well, something you might expect from uh, Tim Burton or, or Guillermo del Toro. Um, but um, we're definitely story focused, so the themes um, in which uh, the themes of the story, uh, you would kind of need a, an adult's mindset to understand them. Uh, but there's no blood or gore or anything like that in the game, so anyone can play it. Um, so when would Forgotten Anne be releasing and what on what platform? It's coming out May 15th, uh, in a bit, uh, uh, about a month, uh, on uh, PS4, Xbox One and PC, Steam. So less about keep the game, more about you personally. So talk to me about your team, how big is the team and like, what's your role? in this game itself? Uh, I'm associate producer. Uh, the team is about 15 of us that have worked on the game. Um, of course, it depends when, uh, at which point in development, uh, the team grows and gets smaller. Uh, that's, that's the nature of individual development, right? Um, we're developing on, on Unity. Um, what about yourself? Tell me more about your personal journey on how you became a game developer. Right. I've always been uh, fascinated with, with video games uh, from when I could, could basically click a mouse. Uh, so um, I started uh, playing video games on uh, DOS uh, before the NES came out, uh, or before the NES came to Iceland, that is. <laughs> but um, yeah, um, yeah. So when I when I uh, went to university, I wanted to be a games writer. So I, I studied English, uh, ended up teaching English at the university for about a year. Uh, but my master's degree, uh, by the time I, I went to uh, do a master's, um, I was fascinated with all all different facets of game development, not only uh, the narrative. So um, my, my interest had, had grown into being about um, animation, about modeling, about uh, coding, anything. So, so instead of going directly uh, for a, a games writer uh, career, I wanted to focus on, uh, have my fingers in everything, uh, every part of the pie, in a sense. So uh, yeah, the, the media studies uh, masters that I did uh, led to my career in, as a producer. Um, what would you say is your biggest turning point in your career? Like the highest or the lowest point of your career? Getting hired at Throughline Games. That was like, <laughs> yeah, definitely. I mean, it's my first job and uh, it's, uh, I, I, was a, um, um, I was a games journalist for six years before I joined the studio. But just being in, uh, just joining a studio and working on something, uh, working on creating a game is definitely the highlight of, of my career. That's, yeah. So if you want to check out more gaming news, check out caffeinegaming.com. And it's been a pleasure interviewing you. Thank you.